Welcome to Sage Audio. Today let's talk about how to tame harsh vocals. But first, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. What are harsh frequencies? What harsh frequencies are is a little subjective, but most people find 2 kHz to 5 kHz to be the most abrasive. If we look at the Fletcher Munson curve, we can see that we're most sensitive to this region of frequencies. But to simplify this, here's an inverse of this graph. We'll notice that the areas with the red line are where our ear is most sensitive, while blue represents where we're least sensitive. Notice that while sub and air frequencies are hard to hear, 3 to 5 kHz, give or take a few hundred hertz, is what sounds loudest to most people. That said, sibilance, which is directly above this range, is also often described as sounding harsh. With that in mind, let's take a listen to our unprocessed vocal and consider how these frequencies are going to come into play as we try to tame the vocal later on. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Using EQ to reduce harsh frequencies. The easiest way to reduce harsh frequencies is with an EQ. All we need to do is attenuate these areas and the vocal will become less abrasive. That said, 3 to 5 kilohertz also helps the vocal cut through a mix, so if we reduce it too much, it's going to get buried. So let's take a listen to the vocal with 3 to 5 kilohertz attenuated a few dB and notice if it sounds less abrasive. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. If you're enjoying the video, hit the like button. It helps us bring you more videos. Deessing to attenuate harsh frequencies. Deessers are frequency-specific compressors that attenuate the frequency ranges that we've been discussing in the last two chapters. Since they work just like a compressor, they'll attenuate this range whenever the signal crosses the threshold, causing dynamic attenuation as opposed to an EQ's static attenuation. Let's set the range for these frequencies between 4 kHz and 10 kHz and notice how we reduce harsh sounding sibilance. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Removing sibilance when editing. Although the essers are very useful, they do have a sound to them, so to speak. So if we want to remove harsh sibilance in a more transparent way, we could use clip gain when we're editing. To find sibilance, listen to the vocal or look for dense clusters of frequencies. Since sibilance is higher in frequency, the waveform representation is going to show waves closer together, indicating more oscillations in a shorter amount of time. We can then isolate the clips and use clip gain to turn them down. So let's take a listen to this editing being applied. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Only a small percentage of people that watch our videos are subscribed, so if you're enjoying the video, consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Covering harsh frequencies with masking. Masking occurs when lower, more powerful frequencies cover up higher ones. By looking at this graphic, we can see that 250 hertz masks or partially covers up a lot of higher, more harsh sounding frequencies. That said, we could subtly increase the amplitude of 250 hertz to reduce harshness. Let's try this in combination with reducing 3 to 5 kilohertz and notice how it tames the vocal. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Avoiding saturation on highs with bus. If you want to add saturation to a vocal, but you don't want to saturate your high frequencies, this can be a challenge without a multiband saturator. Now one method to exclude your highs from saturation is to set up a parallel track and use a linear phase EQ. With the EQ, we'll use a low pass filter to exclude the high frequencies. Then add the saturator and blend the saturation in using the channel fader. So let's take a listen and notice how the vocals become fuller, but not harsh. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. How oversampling reduces harshness. When processing a signal in a digital system like a DAW, there's a limit to how high our frequencies can go. 
Any frequencies that go above this limit will be reflected down the frequency spectrum, adding harsh sounding high frequency distortion, often called foldback or aliasing distortion. In short, oversampling increases the range that the signal can occupy and uses filters to reduce aliasing. Now, although it's best not to saturate a vocal's highs when you're trying to reduce harshness, let's take a listen to it with and without oversampling to see if we notice a difference. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. If you're enjoying the channel, use the search box to watch more of our videos. Try High Latency Linear Phase EQ. If we've tried some of the other tips and they're still not reducing harshness enough, we can try this more unorthodox method. Using EQ, let's still reduce high frequencies around 3 to 5 kHz, but additionally set the processing to the highest linear phase setting that's available. Without getting into lots of detail, this will delay the vocal by over a millisecond. Your DAW will then try to compensate for the delay so that all instruments are in time. As a result, mild phase cancellation occurs to the signal's quickest aspects, or its transients, in turn reducing their impact and causing a smooth, less harsh sound. Let's take a listen to the EQ with and without linear phase enabled. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Emulate U47 capsule. Another strange method would be to emulate the response of a classic capsule. For example, the K47 used in the U47 microphone. Although the response doesn't exactly reduce harsh frequencies, its sound has become synonymous with a vintage and smooth sound indicative of darker recordings. If the capsule's response does cause a harsher sound, simply reduce any filters amplifying those harsh areas. Let's take a listen to the capsule's response being emulated. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Blend highs with reverb. Last up, I'm gonna blend reverb in with my high frequencies to reduce their presence and hopefully some harshness. First, I'll select a studio emulation, something with a short decay time, and then isolate the reverb to just my harsh frequencies, again, three to five kilohertz and maybe some sibilance. With the wet dry, I'll blend the effect in in turn replacing my vocals high and harsh frequencies with subdued reverb reflections. So let's take a listen to it. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. Is this a yes or a no? Which way will it go? Only one way to know. If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.